Hey guys, welcome back to L&D Home. In today's video, we are making a rustic checkers board. I was so excited for this project. I do have to say we had quite a few hiccups along the way, but it ended up turning out fabulous and I love it. So stay tuned till the end. I have this piece of artwork that I had saved for something and I decided it would be perfect for this. So I'm just gonna use some white chalk paint and a crusty old plate that we have laying around and a very worn and torn chalk brush. But I'm going to be giving this whole piece of art two good coats of white chalk paint, making sure I get it as smooth as I possibly can so my finished project looks really nice. I did not show both coats because who wants to watch me do two coats? I'm only showing you one here. And in between my coats, you're going to see that I am going to use a heat gun to dry. I love, love a heat gun. But I do want to share one tip that I never hear crafters talk about, and that is after you dry your first coat, let your piece cool down. Because if you go straight in while your piece is still hot, that paint will be an absolute mess on your second coat. So have a little bit of patience and do let your piece dry down or cool down just a bit. I was ready to start measuring things. And Google told me I needed 64 squares on a checkers board game, so that is what I'm doing. I measured and I had 10 by 10 on mine, so that means I needed one and a fourth inch to make my eight by eight array, because eight times eight is 64. <laughs> um, and this is kind of where things started going awry for me. And it was going well at first, and then I realized, oh, my ruler is not gonna fit in there for me to get straight lines. So I had to bust out an index card I had laying around to draw my lines. As I was drawing my lines, I realized they were a little bit wonky and they were really thin. And I started panicking that my checkers pieces from the Dollar Tree checkers board game were not gonna fit. So I tested them. I busted that checkers board game open and my assumptions were correct. It was too big. I almost ended the project here because I was like, oh my goodness, frustrated. But I did come up with another plan for the checkers pieces. You'll just have to wait till later in the video to see. But I had already started now. I had already painted. I had already measured. I had already started drawing my lines. So I decided I wasn't going to scrap this project just yet. I was going to keep going. So I made my 8x8 grid. I'm not going to make you suffer through me doing both sides, but just know I did all the lines on this side. Then I just turned it and then made my other marks with my ruler and did the lines on that side as well so that I had a nice grid. And here is what my grid ended up looking like. Yes, I know it's not perfect. It's wonky. I told you there were some hiccups in this project and we are not done with those hiccups yet. I, there's more. I am using two different colors, a gray color and then a green color. And this is where my other frustration started. I didn't have any painter's tape. I couldn't find any regular scotch tape. So I thought I was going to be fancy and be able to fill in these grids without smudging it everywhere. And well, I don't have a steady hand, so I don't know why I thought I was going to be able to do that. So I was getting really frustrated during this process because I'm a perfectionist and it was looking an absolute hot mess. Again, second time I almost scrapped this project and decided to just walk away from it. But crafting is not always perfect. And I do like when people show mistakes in videos and how they overcome those mistakes, because you know what? That is life. So I just kept going. I did two coats on each square. I'm only showing you part of the process here because this took me forever. But I did, only, I did do two coats. I remembered that I had these buttons that I actually got from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to use these for my checkers pieces instead of the ones that came in the game. So I just dumped them all out, and I tried to find the biggest ones that I could. You need 24 checkers, like actual playing pieces. So I just picked out the largest ones and then put everything else back into the container to save for a later craft. I then wanted to make sure that we kind of had an even amount of the different sizes because they weren't all the same size. So I just kind of made two piles trying to match them up so that each player kind of had some big, some medium big. I just wanted it to look somewhat even. But I do like the idea of the buttons because since this is a rustic checkers game and my lines are a little wonky already, I thought, well, this would be kind of cool to have it be a little bit more unique and a little bit different. Since I already had my green paint out, I decided to go ahead and paint these pieces. 
I was already painting the original checkers pieces in my mind, so this was not really an extra step for me. I was already going to be doing that. So I did flip them all over, and I wanted to give the bottom a sloppy coat, just in case you saw that. And then I dried with my heat gun very carefully, because buttons are plastic, and I didn't want to melt anything. And then I did give the tops two coats. This was probably the messiest part of this project because I held the buttons with my fingers and I had paint absolutely everywhere. <laughs> but I did find a trick. You will see when I do the other set of buttons, I will show you that trick that I found. So I had that other paintbrush that I was going to use but did not and I decided why am I not using that to hold the buttons? So that's what I did when I did these gray ones. I will say the Waverly Gray did not cover as well as that like actual wall paint that I was using. So I did have to do almost three coats on these buttons. And then I just set them aside to dry a little bit while I went back to my checkers board and decided to work on that. So since I already had wonky squares going on, I decided, well, let's just keep going with that theme. <laughs> I had devised a plan in my head to make this look better by the end. So please, please stick with me. I know you're probably thinking, Right now, this lady cannot craft. This is an absolute mess. What in the world is she doing? Why did she post, post this? I promise, just stay with me. It's going to be really cute in the end. <laughs> and um, that just means you can do this too. If mine is turning out to be a mess, you got this. But I promise it's going to look good. Um, I just went through and I did about three coats as well. Like I said, it wasn't covering super well. I did heat it with my heat gun in between each coat, and then I went outside while that was finishing drying to hit all my checkers pieces with some clear coat. Since this was paint over plastic, I was worried it would chip. I picked the windiest day possible to do this, but I wanted to make sure that none of the paint were gonna, was going to chip off of any of my checkers pieces, especially since kiddos were going to be playing with this game. While we're waiting on our clear coat to dry, we are going to fix this mess. So I decided to just rough it up with some sandpaper. I started with the 400 grit, but I ended up using a 220 grit just to kind of diminish some of those crazy wonky lines that I had and bring up some of that white poking out since I had some of those spaces unintentionally anyway. I then decided that I wanted some crisper lines. So I went in with the Sharpie and I started with a popsicle stick. And my plan was just to make those lines nice and straight. I didn't end up loving the way the popsicle stick kind of went. My lines were still wonky, and you still had to be careful not to get to that rounded part of the popsicle stick. I also tried using my ruler kind of on top of that frame, but yeah, after one pass of that, I decided that was not for me. What worked the absolute best was actually the packaging from the checkerboard game. It went really easy peasy. Loved that process. So I'm giving you a thumbs up. You just can't see my thumb. But I really liked that. Um, and I just did that all the way around just so it looked more like a checkerboard and less like a toddler just painted on something. I then wanted to rough that up a little bit so it wasn't like super stark. Oh, wait, no, first. First, I'm outlining um, the edges with the Sharpie because I got paint up like kind of on the frame. So I just wanted to outline that and kind of hide that like paint smudge situation that was on the side of the frame. And I thought that looked really nice. Then I'm going to be taking some sandpaper again and just kind of roughing it up a little bit so it's not such a stark contrast between the Sharpie lines and the um, actual squares. I still had some crazy spots. So yes, because I'm a per perfectionist, I grabbed the smallest paintbrush I could. I don't know if you can tell, but I had some major bleed over here on all of these squares. It looked a mess. So I just went in, and this didn't take me long at all. I just went in and touched up some of those spots where there was way too much gray on the green and vice versa. And I really think that this just helped make it look a lot better, but it still got that rustic vibe, that distressed vibe. But it looks a lot better after I went in and kind of touched up those areas. And here we finally have the finished result. I think this is absolutely adorable. I love the rustic vibe and I hope you guys love it too. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Please check out the video and the playlist on the screen and don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can become part of our YouTube family and catch more amazing videos that we post here on YouTube. Bye.